Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, not Sunday morning. Uh, Misty Sky, what is happening in that part of the world where you are? Um, I hope that you are walking with Jesus and I uh, hope you are making Jesus a part and parcel of everything that you do. Um, you're welcome to Across the Atlantic Ministry. My name is Okpayemi Kaode. For those who are new to this platform, you have not missed your road, you are in the right place. And for those who have been keen followers, I welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, as I share your word, let your word become lamb to the feet of men. Let them hear and be blessed. Let it touch that person that truly needs this word. And at the end of the day, we shall have the cost, the full cost to glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. My topic for today is I will bring you health. I will bring health. And who is the giver of health? There's a popular saying which says health. Health is wealth. And I think a whole lot of people have been um, pondering recently the struggle as regards to the health of men. You know, the devil has been fighting the health of men because the devil understands the fact that when you are in good health, then it's easy for you to fulfill purpose. It's easy for you to walk in security and prosperity. So the devil fights the health of individuals. And recently, we've been seeing different kinds of ailments. I mean, different kind of diseases, different type of, um, you know, terminal illnesses. That sometimes you just think about it, that what is truly happening. But the devil is a roaring lion, going to and fro, looking for who to devour. So there was a story I heard that even in the olden days, that the abelists or the diviners, what they do is sometimes, based on their spiritual powers, they would go and, and get some type of illnesses from the devil and blow it into the air. And when they blow this into the air, when people go back and forth and they have they find no solution to their illnesses, they will come back to these people and seek for help. In that way, they will begin to exploit and extort. God would he never created us for us to be to be sick. But of course, due to the fall of man, that's what brought introduction to sickness. Due to our transgression, is what brought introduction to sickness. And in that sense, has made people lose their health. But God is saying, I will bring you health. Because God truly wants us to fulfill purpose. He wants us to fulfill destiny. He wants us to have walk that course with Him, with the temple of His. So, one of the things that God wants us to do is to have an healthy mind. But before I go further, I want us to read from the book of Jeremiah 33, verse 6, which says, Behold, I will bring it out and healing. Because God understands that sometimes or the life of man can be filled with infirmity. So he's saying, I will bring here health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. There's a lot of peace that is attached to health. There's a lot of prosperity and security that is attached to health. When, a, when an individual loses their health, they are exposed. They are vulnerable. And God does not want us to walk uh, an insufficiency. So one of the things, or the, the few things that God wants us to have to be healthy is a healthy mind, a healthy body, healthy spirit, and a healthy relationship. And take note, when the devil fights your mind, because sometimes it could bring from just the thoughts due to the, you know, increase in hardship now in the world. People have clouded their or clogged themselves with thoughts. Now, these thoughts can then become a sickness and that which will affect their mind. And when it affects their mind, the end product of this attack will be your body. Because if the body is not in full function, it's, it becomes exposed and gives chance to drown the immunity of that person. It is spiritual though, most of the time. Carelessness is part of it, but also let's not take for granted the spiritual part. When the body is attacked, 
what happens is that the spirit is then exposed. There have been times where sometimes you'll be, you probably might be down with the flu and you, you struggle to play. You, can, you can't even pray. Just the flu, you can't pray. You literally have to drag yourself out of that perimeter or whatever it is called an infirmity and fight yourself into praying willfully and then when the spirit is attacked it gives you it makes it makes it easy for the devil to then launch his misery what then happens it can begin to affect relationship begin to affect, affect your work begin to affect your purpose and the plans of God for your life don't forget when they say health is wealth as well the end product most of the time when they say someone is healthy that person is rich is blessed because old age itself is a blessing on its own good health is a blessing and in that good health you are not frail so you can achieve all the things God has in plan for you then slides you into prosperity and security good health but we should call upon him because this is what he promised in jeremiah 33 6 call upon him in prayer that's where he comforts when that thing is clouding your mind go to god and, and seek him in prayer so he can comfort you before that thing becomes something else he has promised you in Jeremiah 33, 6 that he is going to, I will bring it out and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of peace and truth. Is there peace for anyone who is, who is, who is struggling with infirmity? It's hard. Especially that thing can rob men of their faith itself. So it is in prayer you gain that ascendance and you gain that strength. And you begin to fight before things deteriorate. This is the gospel of Christ to you. But let us take it into consideration that peace is made easy when we are in good health. It is easy for us to achieve all the things, all our dreams, all our aspirations. And most importantly, what God has template, has made a template as regards to what he wants you to achieve for him. Souls can only be won when you're in good health. Lives can be touched when you're in good health. Just like they say, you can't give what you don't have. It's time for everyone to start taking into consideration our health. Our health. Our health. Don't say because I'm walking too much. The devil is another. That's what, especially in this part of the world, that's one of the things the devil used in robbing men. He used the job to rob people of their spiritual life and their health. Today I was having a conversation with my with my wife and you know we we made a very funny statement. That it's of course it's less cue to the gym but more cue at the place where you know drugs are administered or where treatment is made. And let's not forget of course God has called a ministry of health, health organization, to use that as also his, or, or use that as one of his tools to bring people back to good health. But if we can try not to even get to that state and fight, there is there's a warfare against our body, which is the temple of Christ. There's a warfare against our health. And we should not take it for granted. So I beg of you, my brothers, my sisters, is it from exercise? Is it from the things that we take into our mind, the things that we read, the things we expose our eyes to? Our relationships, our spirit, we should make sure that it's always on fire. You should go to the gym if you can. Eat good, eat well, eat clean, eat, eat organic. Because the devil is also using that medium as well. To, 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 to destroy the life of men. And sometimes they, you look through the ingredients of food and they say this is there's plastic in this food and then food that can't digest. The devil you take advantage of anything to fight as long as he works with his own agenda. So we have to say no. That regardless of 
what is in front of us or the part of world that we live in or the part of world that you live in. Don't give in to those lies. And, they, and, 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 and say, ah, at least man must survive and don't take care of your health. But my prayer is, God, grant your people the grace to instill a discipline that helps their health to know what they put in their mouths and to keep their body active to seek you in spirit and in faith to be prayerful as well to create a routine that works in accordance for how we want them to take care of themselves for no man is an island we need our body so strengthen men strengthen your people for whoever is sick for whoever is waiting for your hand upon them I pray that by your stripes they are, they are healed. For that blood that you have shed of the Calvary, or the, or the cross of Calvary for the redemption and the restoration of their soul. I pray that they will encounter you. Encounter your divine healing. For you are Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Rapha. You are the one who healeth. So anyone who is suffering from any form of infirmity, for it's your spirit that helped that infirmity, let them encounter your divine healing in Jesus' name. And for everyone who is listening to this, let them begin to inculcate Discipline, a life of discipline when it comes to their health. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope this word has blessed you. If it has blessed you, share to a friend, brother, and sister. Do not take it for granted. Make sure you make your health high priority when it comes to the things of your life. Do not be ashamed of Jesus, and he will not be ashamed of you. I hope you do have a blessed rest of the weekend. Shalom. Bye.